Hey how you doing? Hope you all are doing great. As you seen in the thumbnail, in this video, we are gonna see, what if Naruto was Eno's harem master. This is part 2, and before getting into video. I request you to check the author of this fanfic, and show some love and support. Name of the story is. The Soul of the Sword by, Time of Rapture, do check it out. All details in description. And if you want next part of this series. Please leave a like share, and consider subscribe. Let's get into the video. Also check out Petron for uncensored spicy content, link in description. Craving something a little spicier? Step into my world of exclusive, 18 plus anime podfix on Patreon. Aww, so Dive deep with Deku, Naruto, and more like you've never experienced before. Kuronai moaned as she was pounded from behind by her student. Her greedy little <coughs> seemed to take his <coughs> with great enthusiasm. They were currently in Naruto's so apartment, good. to be more specific. <laughs> Or unlock the secrets, explore the fantasies, and indulge in the stories too hot for YouTube. Ready to join? Click the link and let's get started. Hey, Kakashi are you awake? Asked the chain-smoking Jounin with a frown on his face. The masked man peered his single eye open and groaned, this doesn't look like a hospital. The chain-smoker could only laugh, ain't that the truth? The room was a spare bedroom in the house, it was relatively clean, but nowhere near hospital standards. Not to mention recovering from chakra exhaustion wasn't fun at all. The only way he could express it was having every muscle in your body feel as if it was ripped and was regrowing. A shinobi with a strong will could easily increase his chakra supply that way, as chakra was in its own sense a muscle. The problem would be overcoming the drastic pain that comes along with chakra exhaustion. Pain medication doesn't even help take away the pain. He pitied the silver-haired Jounin, and at his bad luck of the draw, when it came to a first C-rank mission with his team. You're not in a hospital Kakashi, your team carried on with a mission and brought you back to the client's house. Kakashi pushed himself upright and stared at the Saratobi, I see, so Sasuke took charge and sent the Hokage a letter requiring assistance then. Taking a drag on his cigarette, Asuma closed his eyes, I'm afraid not, it wasn't Sasuke who sent the letter. This in turn caused Kakashi to straighten his posture. Did Sasuke get injured and Sakura had to send it? Asuma felt a bit relieved at that, at least he wasn't the only one who was going to be surprised, knowing Naruto had taken charge. No actually, Sakura and Sasuke both got relatively injured, she was the worst off out of all of you seeing as how you can't recover from poison. Naruto has taken charge, and was the one to send the letter to the Hokage. I don't understand it Kakashi, what have you been teaching these kids, they are working fantastically as a team it would seem, but they don't even know tree climbing. Bakashi's mind was going a mile a minute and ignored the comment that insinuated his lack of proper training or odd choice of training. How was it that Naruto has taken over? I specifically told Sasuke to take charge if something happened and if not Sasuke then Sakura. Asuma frowned so the team went against a direct order from their leader. He though slowly letting that sink in. Better yet, how the hell did Sakura recover from poison? Kakashi asked in surprise. Asuma ran a hand through his hand and scanned his eyes along the wooden floor before speaking, well, it would appear that Naruto has taken hostage of Zabuza's former apprentice. It is strange, she seems almost blindly loyal to him. The thing that puzzled me about the entire thing is I stayed to watch the team as they went off to do tree climbing. Haku is overprotective of Naruto, and oddly enough my student was being borderline possessive of the boy. Akashi looked out the window at the side of the room to spot the group of shinobi down by the shoreline of the house climbing trees. That was rather smart, to keep the house in view in case something happened on either end. They were easy to spot as well, with Naruto wearing bright orange and Sakura wearing pink. Akashi pursed his lips behind his mask, I was going to reprimand Naruto the other day for his choice of clothing, and then I look around and Sasuke is wearing blue, Sakura is wearing pink, Yamanaka is wearing purple. Was I really being that blind that I was singling out the mistakes with Naruto that numerous shinobi his age were making? That doesn't explain to me how Sakura is okay though Asuma. Kakashi said with a sigh. Asuma grit his teeth and squinted his eyes as he put out a cigarette in his hand. Haku. He gasped out, she took to healing Sakura, I would assume on Naruto's personal order to her. Kakashi sighed, he needed to speak to his team. He needed to talk to them about following orders and figure out what to do about Haku. Asuma can you get me some crutches, I want to go check up on the team personally. Son of a bitch. Naruto yelled in frustration slicing the giant blade he held into the tree before him. Everyone around his was practicing tree climbing, except for Ino, Sakura, and Haku. Ino was busy cheering on Sasuke and giving him tips which only served to grate on his nerves. He didn't even say thank you, even though it was with Ino's help that he was progressing. Naruto had tried asking Sakura for help with it since she practically got it in one go and then felt too tired to do it again. 
whether this be because of her chakra reserves or her recovery he didn't know. The thing that annoyed him was that Sakura then went on to tell Sasuke any tips that she could give him, but when he asked she said, you just need to focus Naruto. Yeah focus, this is utterly retarded. He thought in annoyance. Shikamaru and Chaoji had already gone to the water once Haku had told them about water walking. He didn't want to walk out and onto the water just to try and get any tips out of them. Ino had taken to giving Sasuke tips, she knew that she wanted to help Naruto. However Sasuke was a deeper subject with her. It was not just a cute boy with the looks and money. He was the basis of the rivalry between the two of them. If she gave Sakura an inch and went off to help Naruto over Sasuke, Sakura would come in and give 130% into helping Sasuke. That would easily make her lose the struggle for Sasuke's affection between the two of them. This of course why she was currently mugging Haku with the deadliest glare she could muster. The girl wasn't in the middle of this rivalry, so she was just free to observe the situation. She could tell by the look in her eyes, as time went on Haku gained a better understanding of the situation. That's why Ino was torn right now. Haku had told Sakura that she was done for today, and they would continue tomorrow with the remainder of the healing process. Haku took that moment to go over to Naruto and smile. Naruto-sama. She asked with a bright alluring smile on her face. Ino wanted to vomit as she watched and heard the interaction between the two. Who the hell does she think he is, Naruto-sama? Ino wanted to pull the girl's long hair and drag her to the floor. Putting herself out there like a slave. Ino could only scowl. Do you want me to help you with tree climbing? She said tilting her head into his line of view. It was rather cute due to the fact she was taller than him. Naruto sighed as he looked up at the tree, fine what help can you give me? Haku darted a look to Ino over with Sasuke, who looked positively murderous. Haku however felt rather giddy at the fact that she was getting this reaction out of the girl. It was her fault that she decided to become possessive of something that wasn't hers in the first place, right? She moved behind Naruto and began massaging his shoulders as she rested her chin on his shoulder, well from experience she said quietly, which caused Ino to shift uncomfortably and move to the other side of where she was standing with Sasuke and now Sakura, who had moved over to him when she was done with Haku. She moved closer just enough to hear, but not enough for it to be overly suspicious. I believe that you would benefit from the use of your shadow clones. They have so many uses, some being more practical than others. At the moment she said practical she pressed the front of her body up to Naruto's back. It was a rather unexpected move to Naruto, so he turned rather rather the close unexpected contact. Ino grit her teeth and tried to think of anything that would break them up and promptly fell backwards onto her ass with a rather loud ouch. Naruto split apart rather quickly from Haku at that and went over to pick up Ino far faster than anyone else attempted to. Ino sighed as Naruto helped her up and shot a smirk to Haku, who in turn smiled back and mouthed he will be back shortly. Ino pressed her lips together at that and frowned, she faked a stumble when Naruto pulled her up. She fell into a hug with him briefly before backing up, thank you Naruto. She tried to make it sound like she didn't care in front of Sakura and Sasuke. She just didn't think about how that would make Naruto feel. The said boy pursed his lips and walked back over, what were you saying Haku? This time he was a few feet from Haku. This of course caused Ino to stick out her tongue at Haku childishly and throw up a peace sign. Haku just rolled her eyes, Naruto can you come over here, I want to show you the footing I usually used when I was learning this. Ino's face instantly turned back to her mugging when she saw Haku rub her hand down Naruto's leg and stick his right foot to the tree. Alright Naruto-sama, I need you to channel chakra to your feet until you stick. You need to channel the correct amount so that you don't fly off or anything of that sort. Take your time, there is no need to rush. I will make sure you have this done in the next hour. She made that statement rather loud and let it linger in the air. Sasuke and Naruto had been scaling the tree constantly the past three hours. Sasuke had been progressing consistently up the tree, while Naruto hadn't been able to make it more than eight feet up without flying off. Of course this was likely due to Sasuke gaining insight on what he should be doing and having better control than Naruto. Naruto was a bit surprised when Haku had said that, but it brought a smile to his face regardless. Merely the fact that someone was willing to help him with this was enough motivation he needed to do it. He now couldn't let Haku down with her helping him. A new determination flashed over Naruto's face, and he grinned. Pick me up Naruto, sticking wood in me isn't very nice before we really has a conversation. Came a seductive voice with a hint of humor in it. Naruto visibly scowled when he heard the voice and rubbed the back of his neck. I didn't stick any wood in you QB. He mentally scowled at that, nor will I ever fox. I stuck you in wood. An enticing laugh came from deep within, and he could almost feel the fox smile, that doesn't change the fact that you want to stick wood in me Naruto-kun. Naruto's eyes widened as the world seemed to become the definition of chaos around him. The trees around him had turned ghastly and aflame. 
The water had darkened to a nearly black color, reflecting the flames around him. Fish had risen to the top of the water. A large fissure had gone right through wave, from what he could tell. It looked like the fissures on his blades, red hot lava, slowly moving in the fissure. His friends were no longer around, it was him in the barren chaos of the former forest he was in. He spun around rather panicked at the sight only to come face to face with the same gorgeous, enticing, seductive fiery red-headed woman. She winked at him and gave him a quick kiss on the cheek before his world turned back to normal. Naruto held the place where she kissed, similar to a kid who shook a star's hand and claimed he would never wash it again. Naruto was in a daze. Aku frowned, there was a heavy chakra spike, and a Jinjutsu placed over Naruto for a moment, and then it suddenly vanished. Judging from his look on his face, she knew she was right. It was just a matter of how it happened. Naruto we need to continue. She said with a frown. That snapped Naruto out of his daze with wide eyes, and he promptly nodded, right, sorry. He turned back to the tree and began to regulate his chakra, all the while talking to the fox. You better not do that crap again QB. The woman could only chuckle, you loved it Naruto, you should have seen your face. You were just eatable. Naruto scowled at QB's choice of words, yeah yeah, you're not tasting nothing. There was a moment of silence, we'll see now pick me up. I'll pass. Naruto said rolling his eyes. He would pick the blade up on his own terms. Imagine his surprise when QB said. Okay. The blade flew into Naruto's hand, getting pulled out of its spot in the tree and flung up into the air as if it was flying. It stuck in at the top of the tree, and QB whispered to him, if you don't get the blade out of the tree in your next three attempts, the forest will burn. Naruto's eyes hardened, despite the fact that everyone stared at the blade in wonder, even Haku who now only had more questions for Naruto. Naruto with even more determination than before grit his teeth and made several clones. I knew I could get you motivated like the women who would do anything for you. Personally I like the black-haired one, she's dangerous. Danger is always fun. Naruto grit his teeth as his clones began to run up and down the trees to the best of their ability, some falling and breaking. However it was all knowledge for Naruto to sort through. However remember Naruto-kun, no matter how many women you get with, I will always be the main woman for you because it is simple. I own you. Naruto grit his teeth as the last clone fell to the bottom of the tree and popped into smoke. Naruto sprinted at the tree and stuck to it as if he had been doing it for years. It was amazing what proper motivation could do to a person. He got to the top of the tree in one go and tugged the sword out of the tree and jumped off. Landing in a crouch Naruto sighed as he looked up and silently said. You don't own me. Laughter for a good well was the fox's response, which gave Naruto the time to look at Haku's surprised face. That was until QB responded. Oh really? Look down. The ground was scorched where he had landed. The man sat down under the large tarp overhanging a fruit stand. The majority of the fruits were no longer good, but things were tough in the land of waves. The man sat with a large black cloak over his body and rested up against a wall with a sheathed sword between his legs. The man had on a straw hat that was casting a shadow over the man's face. Upon closer inspection the man had blonde hair with a bit of hair on his chin. He had an athletic build and there was part of a red sash visible from a spot his cloak wasn't covering. The man appeared to like belts, judging from several of them on each of his knee-high black boots. Even his blade had a belt around the sheath. He strummed a guitar in front of him and Gabe began to sing with a sorrow-filled voice, one filled with guilt and regret. Is there anybody going to listen to my story? All about the girl who came to stay. She's the kind of girl you want so much it makes you sorry. Still you don't regret a single day. Not many that had walked by had paid a major mind as he sang that short bit, but those that did could tell that the man had lost something. It was a shame that everyone else in the town had lost something as well, maybe if that wasn't the case someone would be willing to listen. The man stood up, leaving his large cloak behind revealing his cape-like jacket that covered his upper body, but in the back went down near his feet. He calmly walked away, sword strapped to his waist and guitar sealed inside a scroll. The back of his black cape-like jacket had a kanji on the back of it. The kanji for peace. You seriously expect me to believe that Naruto was just able to scorch the ground when he jumped out of the tree? Better yet, Sasuke. How was he able to beat you up that tree, he should have by far had the hardest time out of everyone in Konoha, trying to get up that tree due to his chakra supply. The silver-haired Jounin said with a frown. He was in pain and was frustrated, he felt like his team was lying to him, he knew over a thousand jutsu, and he had never heard of one that scorched the ground upon impact with your feet. Especially something virtually sealess, he didn't want to think Naruto was adapting more and more of QB's power, but so far this was unexplainable. Really Kakashi-sensei. Naruto was having such a hard time getting up the tree, and then he made it in one go once Haku decided to help him. Sakura said trying to convince her sensei they weren't lying to him. Wait a minute, you never mentioned Haku before. He asked as his eyes narrowed slightly. 
Sasuke however took that time to cut in. She didn't really have time to help him, she just had him stick his feet to the tree and find the right amount of chakra. Then he grabbed his sword, which pretty much flew up to the top of the tree. I guess he really wanted to get it down or something, which motivated him to get up the tree. Sasuke had a scowl on his face once he finished saying that. It insinuated that Naruto made it up the tree before him, and while that was the truth it wasn't something he ever wanted to be known to the students that were in his graduating class. Bakashi swapped a crutch into his opposite hand to run a hand through his hair before taking the crutch back. Alright, well I am interested in a few things, you will answer me is that clear? At the silence of his students, Kakashi decided he wouldn't fish for a yes sensei. Or something along the lines, he just wanted to get to the bottom of the situation. How did Naruto get that blade? Sasuke sighed, after you passed out in the water, Naruto swam out to keep you from drowning, while I watched over Haku extract the poison from Sakura's body. Once he set you down, I think he felt Sabuza's sword would just go to waste staying on that tree, so he took it. Bakashi was getting rather frustrated at his team's lying, this is not the time to be messing around, the blade looks nothing close to Zabuza's former blade, I would know he nearly killed me with it. Not one of his most pleasant memories either. The sight of the giant cleaver coming down on his head was not a pretty one. Sasuke crossed his arms over his chest, what exactly is the point of asking us if you don't bother to believe us when we tell you the truth? Bakashi paused once Sasuke said that, was he really overthinking things that badly? However if what Sasuke said was true then, that would mean Naruto somehow changed the blade. The question is how exactly? Alright, I apologize, I'm in a lot of pain right now, and I'm rather frustrated that my specific chain of command was completely reversed when I was injured. He let his words linger for a moment, hoping they would sink and telling them not to do it again. Anywhere where are Naruto and this Haku woman? Sakura appeared to cheer up at the mention of Haku, which Kakashi caught. I know where they are. She said rather cheerily. She was likely going through a phase some patients go through when their doctor saves their life. It didn't appear to be anything fanatic however, so there was no need to worry. The group followed Sakura out to the clearing by the lake, where Naruto, Team 10 and Haku were all located. Most of them were soaking wet, besides Haku who had a glint of amusement in her eyes. However the scene was a strike at his pride. She saved his students' life, and she taught his students more than he had taught them in about a day and a half that he hadn't taught them in weeks. The thought was annoying in its own right. Naruto was standing shakily on the water, with several clones surrounding him doing the same, which caused Kakashi to raise an eyebrow. He was surprised that Naruto would do such training, he almost felt as if his student was cheating. However then he would have to resort to calling himself and an entire clan, even his best friend a cheater. Still nonetheless it was an impressive feat, he was surprised that he wasn't using more clones. Kakashi closed his eyes and thought to himself for a moment. If Naruto used this tactic, he could advance faster. The problem falls in the fact that he may advance so fast that he would pass his students so much that they would all feel behind and feel weak in comparison. He didn't know whether he should support the growth of his student or hold him back to keep him in check with the growth of his team. To him it was a tough decision, he saw a lot of himself in Sasuke, and he naturally expected the boy to succeed to greatness relatively quickly under his guidance. However exceeding to greatness means nothing if every day of training a genius does, a hard worker does a 50-day equivalent in the same amount of time. Bakashi pursed his lips behind his mask as he repeatedly saw Haku catch Naruto if he was going to slip and fall into the water. It was obvious who the original was, Sasuke, Sakura, go ask Team 10 how to start this exercise. It is another basic chakra control exercise, you all will do fine. It would be best to test yourself by the edge of the lake and trying to find the correct amount of chakra to keep yourself afloat. Sakura seemed to realize instantly what Kakashi was getting at, yet said something that caused Kakashi to try and mask his displeasure, like Haku had Naruto stick his foot to the tree to find the proper amount of chakra before running up it right. Kakashi closed his eyes and chuckled, yes like Haku. He finished the last part and quickly began to carry himself out there as best as he could. Kakashi continued to carry himself to the water, and with a feat of impressive chakra control, kept himself in the crutches on top of the water, as if it was solid ground. Haku turned her shoulder as she saw Kakashi approach, it was relatively surprising that the Jounin appeared to be having no trouble at all keeping afloat on the water. Part of her hated the man for what happened to Zabuza, but another part of her told herself that if she got into battle with Kakashi here and killed him, despite Naruto's apparent dislike of the man, Naruto would hate her. Thus goes the cycle of hatred in the shinobi world. Shinobi get even. You do realize that Naruto would likely have an easier time learning if he had the chance to try and find the necessary chakra amount to stay afloat before going out this far into the lake. Kakashi said with his casual eye smile. This of course nearly caused Naruto to slip. Haku had caught him before he even got knee deep in the water, but that didn't stop him from being annoyed. What the hell. 
You mean that all this time I wouldn't have to have been freezing my ass off. Haku why didn't you tell me about that? Haku rolled her eyes, personally, I learned this over a hot spring in the winter. Every time I fell in it would feel as if my skin was on fire. I learned this relatively quickly. Maybe if you dispelled your shadow clones already you would be done. Haku said as she tossed Naruto up only for him to shakily land on his hands and knees in the water. Hey pick me up, that shit isn't funny I am just about to dry off. He said unable to look at either of the seasoned shinobi behind him. Bakashi grinned and booted Naruto in the back, causing him to fall face first into the water, and he quickly returned to his injured position. Haku while finding the scene rather funny, finally realized the true meaning behind it when Naruto came up sputtering. What the? Who kicked me? He yelled in frustration, now soaking wet and trying to pull himself out of the water. Kakashi raised his only visible eyebrow and lifted a crutch. I'm in no shape to be even moving my legs for more than walking Naruto, who do you think kicked you? Haku proceeded to purse her lips and give Kakashi a glare when Naruto turned to her. Kakashi in turn gave her a classic eye smile before speaking. Haku would you mind helping Ino and Sakura while I speak with Naruto. Give you some time to cool off, they are down a ways near the shore under the shade. There was an underlying message behind Kakashi's words, which Haku had picked up on. It wasn't a suggestion, it was an order. The challenge she gave him when she looked in his eyes was blatantly clear to any seasoned shinobi. You're in no position to be ordering me around. Naruto sighed, he didn't notice the hidden message however he did notice Haku's apprehension. Don't worry Haku, they probably need more help than I do at the moment, especially Sakura since she just started I think. You should go help them. He finished his suggestion to Haku with a smile that shattered any apprehension Haku had. If she was going to serve Naruto better than she serves Ibuza, she should at least listen to him. She could virtually travel faster than the speed of sound anyways with this much water around her. Mirror transportation had its advantages. She would just keep Naruto in her sights. Haku nodded her head, alright Naruto-sama. She said quickly, slightly displeased that she had to leave him to help Sakura and Ino, but that was what he wanted her to do so she would do it. Bakashi raised an eyebrow at the Naruto-sama part. Has Naruto really gotten her to be blatantly and blindly loyal to him in this short time? Naruto I need to talk to you. Kakashi said slowly frowning under his mask at what he just saw between the boy and Haku. Naruto merely rolled his eyes at his teacher. Yeah I gathered that when you came over here. You rarely talk to me if you aren't reprimanding me about something I did. Bakashi looked away from the cold truth about his neglect of his student, you know she is right. You would probably be done with this exercise if you dispelled your clones. Naruto frowned, yeah well I can't be passing out on the job. I have been the one keeping the team together, he said putting emphasis on I. If I appear weak, I am afraid the team may fall apart. Bakashi's gaze softened at that, maybe I have been underestimating the boy. He looked around the area with a frown on his face. Naruto had been a better leader to the team than he had been on their first real mission. While he was out of commission, he practically forced teamwork upon everyone. He was able to turn an enemy into a follower, but more importantly a friend. He wasn't going to play the ignorant card, if there was one thing the boy really needed in his life it would be friends. That was one of the problems he had been avoiding addressing with Sasuke. The boy believed that he could get by on his own and would refuse any reasoning that he would try to throw the boy's way. He pictures Itachi as the height of strength in the ninja world, which wouldn't be very far off, but Sasuke's brother does have a flaw in his shinobi way. He has a lot of power, likely more than even himself, but what does he have it for? He has no one to protect, no one to defend. What good is power if you have no one to use it for? Naruto looked at Kakashi curiously as the man aimlessly looked around. Kakashi eventually turned his head back, well you wouldn't be under such strain if you dispel the clones one at a time Naruto. It makes it easier for you to file the information. Sort of like a stream going down a drain, rather than a tidal wave that way. Naruto looked puzzled for a moment, but took Kakashi's advice for once. What could it hurt? One by one clones popped leaving a fogginess over the water for a moment before disappearing. For Naruto it rapidly became easier and easier for him to stand on the water, as if he had been practicing for days. By the time he was done he could have sworn he could stay on top of the water while doing backflips. The idea of getting a technique such as this so quickly made him gain a huge grin across his face. The idea that he beat Sasuke in doing something by a mile was something that he was proud of. Bakashi smiled at the amount of joy that came across his face. Perhaps this was the look that Ibito would have given if he had ever beaten him at something, besides being a good teammate and a good friend. Naruto I was originally going to reprimand me for taking charge of the situation and for bringing Haku along, right? Naruto cut Kakashi off with his accusation. Kakashi sighed, originally. Yes that was the case. However I believe I have underestimated you. You have done a lot and kept the team organized, I shouldn't get mad over that. You did a good job. 
Kakashi felt guilty when the borderline shocked look of surprise came across his face. Was he really that open about how he underestimated Naruto? Kakashi choosing his words carefully biting on his lips while he thought over how he wanted to say things, this probably isn't the proper thing to do in these situations, but how would you like to be the designated leader of the team when I am not around and the designated leader for the remainder of the mission? Naruto's eyebrow raised at being the designated leader of the team when Kakashi was away, but for the remainder of the mission. He had to hold himself from gaping when Kakashi announced that. Not trusting his voice at the moment, he numbly nodded his head. He swallowed some spit that built up in his mouth and took a deep breath before speaking, well um, I just have to ask why Kakashi sensei. He added the title as a late afterthought. If his supposed sensei was going to recognize him and admit to his mistake and try to make up for it. Then he would try to put aside their differences and try to move forward. Kakashi swallowed his pride and with a sigh he spoke, well it is fairly apparent that you have taken charge of this mission and have been doing a fantastic job. With Zabuza out of the picture and no danger I can foresee in the future, I believe I can trust your judgment with training the teams as a group and you have my full support. However I would like for you to keep me posted on any actions you choose to do. Naruto took a moment to let that all sink in and nodded, alright he said slowly with a frown on his face, still not believing it to be completely true. Kakashi nodded and turned to walk away, letting one last message drift through the air on his walk back to the house, be careful Naruto, I was going to talk to you about Haku, but now I just don't want to see you getting hurt. I don't get why you are so upset Ino. So what if Haku helped Naruto? Sakura asked as she was quickly getting the hang of the water walking. She was having a harder trouble balancing than she was controlling her chakra output to keep her above the water. So what? Sakura how can you say that? Naruto is your teammate. Suddenly this girl is just going to come in here and start feeling all over Naruto. Did you see the way she rubbed her hand down his leg? The way she was massaging his shoulders and whispering in his ear. Ugh. Ino picked up a rock and chucked it as far as she could out into the water. The rock making a rather large splash and Ino sat herself down on a rock near where Sakura was practicing. Sakura stayed silent as she listened to her friend and rival rant about the girl. I just don't get it, why would Naruto even let her touch him like that, he has always been so clueless about girls before. She exasperated with a frown. Sakura shrugged, I don't think she was making a move on him or anything Ino, this is Naruto we are talking about. I mean sure, he's been clueless about girls, I mean, look at Hinata. She has liked him for years and Naruto hasn't noticed. I mean I guess it is partially her own fault for not bothering to approach him, but still. Even if she was making some sort of move on him, I doubt he knew how to react if a girl started to touch him. Ino scowled, no. He would know what to do. She threw another rock into the water. Sakura had turned to Ino with a raised eyebrow when she said that. How do you know that Naruto would know what to do Ino? Questioned Sakura. She had stopped standing on top of the water and opted to stand on a rock nearby in shallow water in case her concentration slipped. Ino frowned, she couldn't openly say something about what happened between the two of them. Ino shrugged, I just have a feeling that Naruto would know what to do if a girl ever came onto him, he did make that ridiculous henge after all. Ino lied through her teeth. Sakura frowned, why are you so interested who comes onto Naruto anyway? Have you finally given up on going after Sasuke? Sakura finished that thought with a piercing gleam in her eye. The thought that she may finally no longer have to compete for Sasuke's affection. Ino promptly squashed that theory though when she said, as if forehead, I am just annoyed that that Naruto is getting attention from this random girl, yet Sasuke isn't giving me or you any attention. It was a half-truth. She wasn't just annoyed, she was borderline furious that Haku had moved in and was effectively taking Naruto away between her fingers. She made sure that she was going to talk to him one of these days while out in wave. Sakura sighed, look Ino, Haku may have some rough spots, but she saved my life, I don't think there is anything to worry about with her, she is a strong Kanoichi. You should be happy that Naruto has someone like her possibly going after him. Sakura flinched a bit on the inside. She used to remember when she was the target of Naruto's affections. That seemed to stop once they had gotten on a team. Now Naruto could look at her nearly naked and not even be phased. The thought made her shrink a bit. No one even seemed phased by her being naked, not Naruto, not Sasuke, nobody. Ino threw another rock out to the water, whatever, I don't think she is good for him. I think that she may be too skilled of a Kanoichi for Naruto. Haku had snuck up on the pair and said calmly after Ino's statement, yes well I believe that a skilled Kanoichi would only help further Naruto-sama's progression as a shinobi. Not to mention you are both right, I am far more skilled than either of you or both of you combined for that matter. Ino turned around with a glare, great the person I least wanted to see at least since she is here, it means she isn't with Naruto. She thought with a frown on her face. Sakura seemed to address her thoughts when she said. Haku. I thought you were helping Naruto. 
Sakura asked, surprised that the shinobi had snuck up on the two of them. Mildly afraid due to the truth in her statement and idly wondered how long she had been listening in on their conversation. Naruto-sama appears to be finished with water walking. She motioned a ways down the lake where Naruto was talking to Kakashi after having dispelled his clones. He was hopping up and down on the water perfectly fine. Ino believed that Naruto was done, he got tree climbing done relatively instantly the second Haku started helping him. That of course only served to frustrate her more. She was helping Sasuke for at least an hour, and while he made progress, he didn't get anywhere close to getting up the entire tree in one go. The image of Haku's comment moments ago sank in about her being better than her and Sakura combined. She crushed the idea and quickly asked, why do you call him that? Haku gave a fake smile, call who what Ino-chan. Ino grit her teeth but tried to remain calm, don't call me Ino-chan, and you know what I am talking about. Why do you call Naruto Naruto-sama? Haku chose to not look at Ino when she responded, trying to be blatantly disrespectful. She walked out on the water, allowed a foot to sink a bit when it came near Ino, allowing a bit of extra water to splash onto Ino. Simple, I pledged my allegiance to Naruto-sama, and I shall treat him how a person like him should be treated. Ino forced herself to smile as she ground out, oh so you're his slave then? I understand. Haku had to fight down the flinch, it was one thing to be thought of as a shinobi tool. All shinobi of a village wear tools of the kage's, an extension of a kage's will. It was a low blow for Ino to call her a slave, and she knew the girl knew it as well. There was a fine line between being a female slave and a tool. However opting to take the bait and rework the conversation in her favor. She wasn't about to let a foolish girl who couldn't decide which boy to chase try and run this conversation. I wouldn't call myself a slave I have given my allegiance to him however, so like a shinobi of a kage, I am an extension of his will. Similar to how you gen and do your umd rank missions for your hokage. However, I guess if I wanted to delve deeper into it, I guess I am the closest person Naruto has ever been with in life so far. Ino picked up a rock, she just wanted Haku to give her a reason to throw it at her, I really doubt that. I am sure that there have been people around Naruto that have been closer to Naruto than others. I am sure there may even be those that have been with him on a more intimate level. Haku paused at that, she didn't have a direct comeback to that. The message was clear as day, but Sakura was forcing it to be explained. What do you mean intimate level Ino? Sakura asked eyes wide, was she really implying that Naruto could already be going around having sex at their age? Hell the only thing she had close to any sexual activity was when she spent the night over at Ino's and they practiced kissing. Not one of my fondest moments looking at how we act with each other today. She thought with a frown. Ino maintained Haku's gaze the entire time while talking, well you know Sakura, how much do we really know about Naruto? I mean he likely has people that are family to him, but don't forget that bastardized version of a hench. He must have had someone he knew be with him on an intimate level at some point. There was a silence amongst the girls, Haku and Ino didn't avert their gazes, while Sakura let that tidbit of information about Naruto sink in. Haku was the first to remove her gaze from Ino, this was a battle she didn't expect to lose. She never thought that Ino and Naruto had ever been together on an intimate level. However she wanted this battle of words to finish up on an even note, well that is good I suppose, he is rather cute, and he is strong. If he has been intimate before, he will at least know what he is doing. Ino had thought she won up until that point. She thought that her comment had put claim on Naruto. It had only added fuel to a fire. Haku sighed, well I'm going to go look and see if Naruto-sama needs any help with learning a jutsu or something along those lines. You two appear to have the hang of water walking. Sakura don't strain yourself. Haku then disappeared by melting into the water. Sakura was the first to overcome her surprise, wow do you really think she is going to make a move on Naruto tonight? Ino had her head held down, I don't know Sakura. Remembering a saying her mother often told her when she had been instigating fights at school. You weren't just playing with fire Ino, you soaked the matches in gasoline. Naruto sighed, once he had taken up his post as leader of the team, he decided to tell Kakashi that he would go into town. He wanted to see how things were down in the poor town that Gatu ran. If he was going to be saving these people, he wanted to see whom he was saving. He didn't know what he was hoping to see, when he got there he felt at home. The problem was in order to feel at home, then everyone else would have to be miserable, because when he is a Kanoha he is miserable, but he can't call it home. He is ignored while everyone else goes on with his or her lives. Here, he was at home because while everyone was going on with their lives, they were all miserable. It may have made absolutely no sense to the average person, but to him it made perfect sense. However he didn't want this to last, the more he looked around, the children trying to kick around a deflated ball. He knew he had to help these people, it was just a matter of how. He walked around aimlessly for the past 10 minutes, before he walked past a fruit stand and heard voice carrying a tune through the surrounding area. Is there anybody going to listen to my story? 
All about the girl who came to stay. She's the kind of girl you want so much it makes you sorry. Still you don't regret a single thing. Naruto stopped when he heard the voice, across from the fruit stand inside a small pub in there was a man inside. He was the one singing. Naruto didn't know if it was the right thing to do, but he wanted to learn more about the people he was going to save. Well he had to start somewhere. He walked up to the blonde man at the table and sat across from him and calmly said, I listen. Haku had been wandering around the town aimlessly after she had heard from Kakashi that Naruto was in the town trying to connect and learn more about the people. She wanted to slap the man. Sure Naruto was strong, but if Gatu hired someone else of Zabuza's caliber, he could very well be screwed. She had searched through several areas of the port town. However once she thought all hope of finding the blonde was lost and she would have to wait till he came back to the house to talk to him, she found a head of blonde hair in the window. She knew Naruto must have been the only blonde-haired individual besides Ino in the entire village. Everyone in the port town seemed to have dark hair colors, nothing that stood out. The closest thing was a light brown and even that was far away from blonde. She tried to block out the idea that there was another similarity between Naruto and Ino, it still stung a bitter loss at the argument. She just hoped her final comment was able to get across to the girl and make her thing. When she rushed into the pub, she paled instantly. She was hoping to spot Naruto to talking to your everyday village fisherman. Imagine her surprise when she spotted Naruto speaking to the only man she had personally met besides Kakashi to best Zabuza in combat. Or in peace. Naruto Haku said hesitantly. She didn't like being in peace's presence. Zabuza had told her about the man in various stories from his past, while he was usually known to be a good guy, there was something off about him. Naruto had spun around when he heard his name being called by Haku. Oh hey Haku, why are you here? Aren't you supposed to be helping Ino and Sakura? Haku stood at the doorway doing her best to avoid Peace's gaze, yeah, but I think we should go back to Tazuna's house, they were going to start preparing dinner soon. She lied straight to her new master's face. She hated doing it, but she would do anything to keep Naruto safe. Naruto frowned, but I was just about to listen to this man's story. I want to learn more about the people I am going to be trying to save Haku. Haku pursed her lips, Naruto I don't think this man is native to wave country. She did her best to stay focused on Naruto when Peace raised his eye and finally acknowledged the girl as someone more than your average shinobi. Not many people outside of the Mist Village know of him and she obviously had to know something with that open-ended statement. Naruto spun around, wait so you don't live here? He questioned the blonde swordsman. The man stared at Naruto with calculating eyes before responding with his own question, if I am not native to Wave, would you not listen to my story? Naruto frowned, he wanted to learn more about the people of this port town. However he could have approached anyone on the street and asked him or her what happened. Yet he came to this man because he interested him. Aku prayed that Naruto would say he didn't want to listen and that Warren wouldn't openly move to cut the boy in half. Zabuza called the man violent, but she could never tell if he was telling the truth or if there was an underlying message to his words. Perhaps they were rivals or something along those lines. Naruto, much to Haku's displeasure shook his head, no it doesn't matter, I am rather interested in what you have to say. Oren leaned back and crossed his arms and gave his formal introduction to the two, alright, my name is Peace, War and Peace. He put emphasis on his name, causing it to sound like War and Peace, which caused Naruto to raise an eyebrow. He thought he had a weird name on the basis of a maelstrom or Raymond Topping. Aku clenched and unclenched her hands, this was the place she least wanted to be at the moment, but it would be even worse to leave Naruto alone with the man. Once Warren had seen the two of them situated, he leaned forward on the table, his face coming close to the candle that decorated it. The flames licked his face, casting a shadow on the upper part of his face, while his mouth was completely brightened. Where do we begin? Naruto listened intently as Warren began to tell the story, he personally was wondering if the story was about him or just this character he is talking about. In the Mist Village, a shinobi nation in civil war. A child was more likely to die on the streets before he would even get his education. The families in these times often struggled wondering if they would be able to put food on the table each night. The people were in a recession, the single parents of course, had a bad pulling and fewer income to support their families. However the majority of the two parent families were severely flawed. Many of the men and women resorted to cheating on their spouses due to them not being able to have enough energy when they got home to do anything of the sort. The people were on a downhill slope and there were no signs of the people getting back up for a long time. The children in the village often joined the ninja academy whether their heart was in it or not. That was where the most money was. This of course turned into more of a problem than a benefit. With the graduation requirements of killing your best friend, who could blame them? You ended up having classes full of children who didn't want to lift up a knife to defend themselves against a shinobi onslaught and then normally one or two children with no qualms about having to kill the shinobi in the class. 
it usually ended in a bloody mess, with few children standing, and many being scarred for life. The parents didn't care, they continued to send their children in. Saying things like, honey it is fine, I know some children have had some bad luck in the past, but our boy is strong. Imagine their surprise when one day a shinobi is on their front doorstep asking the parents to come in and identify the body. Way to boost morale right? Naruto already had a pained expression on his face from the things this man was saying. It was almost as if parts of his life were being described by this man. It made him wonder for a moment if he would feel more at home in the mist. Haku on the other hand was staying quiet, repeatedly tapping her fingers on her soft skin. She didn't like hearing about the harsher parts of her past, and this man wasn't pulling any punches. You often had children on the street after they had ran from their homes. They would be afraid of what their parents would do if they found out that they had dropped out of the academy, afraid to die. You could see them in the dark alleyways of the towns, usually in groups gathering scraps just to live. This however left them wide open, with the hospitals being taken up by the missed country soldiers, there was no room for the everyday people. Of course disease broke out. If you were a shinobi, you could handle it, the disease appeared to have been targeting people with low chakra reserves anyways. The only way for a civilian to get the proper attention he needed was to have a shinobi as a family member fight the chain of command to have their family member be healed. Or they would have to try and leave the village in order to try and find help elsewhere. This of course brought about criminals, the only word I could give them off the top of my head. They would gather shinobi that had turned missing ninja from various nations and teach them how to treat the disease. The symptoms of the disease weren't pretty, however it was quickly becoming the norm around the civilian populace. Black spots and pain. Those were the only systems. The doctors in hospitals often said they were contracting a disease that gave them muscle death. A disease that could be simply cured by a chakra transfusion and a small supply of soldier pills. However, no one would help. So the civilians, willing to do anything to stop the pain, would go to these criminals, with all the money their families have, in order to try and buy themselves out of this disease. They wanted to be cured. They would do it at the cost of their families starving the majority of the time. Not to mention what was going to happen to them if another member in the family contracted the disease. Or inside as a barmaid came up to the table, she had been listening in on the story, seeing as how business as usual was incredibly slow. She had no idea how she was going to pay off Gatu come the end of the month. She was already behind two months, and she wasn't in the mood to become some thug's whore again. That was why she was rather relieved when the man had given her the amount of money for a regular meal, without even ordering anything but water. Of course he had asked her to sit down with him as well, but it wasn't like she had anything better to do. Once the barmaid was down and Warren had taken a few sips of his water, he had continued on with his story for his listeners that were entranced with the harsh realities of the mist village. So on to the main character of this story. Naruto raised an eyebrow at that, isn't he supposed to say, now on to the hero of the story. Until he paused. Unless he is not a hero. The boy went by the nickname of Peace, rather contradicting with his first name practically meaning war and. He had taken to becoming a shinobi on his mother and father's insistence. His dad was a shinobi while his mother stayed at home taking care of him and the house. She often took to cheating on his father, it was through pure strokes of luck that the man didn't find out. It was punishable by death for a civilian woman to cheat on a shinobi's spouse. Ironically enough, the law didn't go both ways. His father was blatantly always sleeping around. It had come to the point that once his father had brought home a woman that his mother had the last straw. She flipped and left late in the night, unable to withstand the man who she was forced to be with. If only she was able to take her son along. So naturally the father took to drinking while the boy went on to participate in the academy. He would come home, only to have to rush to his room in hopes that his father wouldn't spot him and beat the crap out of him. It was no point trying to fight back against a man who wouldn't even feel your punches until he was throwing up the following morning over a toilet. Peace had quickly learned that if he didn't want to get beat up, he should start making his way home around 5 in the afternoon. The man usually drank himself to sleep by 5.30. Peace had excelled when going through the academy. He was a year ahead of his soon-to-be rival Mamachi Zabuza. The name shot up both Naruto and Haku's heads. Naruto was surprised that this man knew Zabuza, perhaps it wasn't such a good deal to stop and listen to a stranger's story, no matter how intriguing. Haku was mildly surprised, she gathered that the man and Zabuza knew each other, it was merely rather surprising they were rivals. The barmaid looked utterly confused when she had seen the recognition come across the teenager's face. But the death of three of the missed seven shinobi swordsmen, two of the places being filled by their newest recruits, one being Aim. The other being a shinobi that grew to be one of the most feared shinobi from the mist due to his blade, Samahata. His name was Hashika Gekisum. As both Peace and Zabuza grew as shinobi, both aspiring to be the shinobi to fill in the last open spot with the swordsmen, their rivalry caused the two to improve in leaps and bounds. 
it caused one of them to become the youngest of the seven shinobi swordsmen to date. The air around the room suddenly got thick and heavy as Peace reached to his side and gently set his blade on the table before everyone while sheathed. It appeared that Peace had the clear advantage over his abuser due to his weapon of choice. A living sword that his father had passed down to him, named Noctis. Despite Peace disliking his father, the blade was damn good. The man couldn't help but give a grin to everyone. It was obvious that the blade was one of the man's prides and joys. The blade was a long black metal katana with a living red eye near the hilt. As he said this he unsheathed the blade to show the truth to this statement. It solidified that this truly was his story. The blade was often sheathed, for when the blade could see it would constantly be casting Jinjutsu on its enemies. Oren paused for a moment, judging whether or not he should tell the two shinobi before him. He knew that the two of them were the shinobi sent here to protect the bridge builder. However not one to leave his story open like that he quickly gave a definition directly to the barmaid. Ninjutsu is a ninja technique that casts illusions over people. The blade could take away an opponent's depth perception. It often made them stumble, when an enemy thought he was moving to evade an attack he could very well have been walking right into it. It nearly rendered its opponents blind, when they think they may have been actually hitting its wielder they could be swinging aimlessly at air. The blade had caused peace to be a respected shinobi, especially among the shinobi swordsmen, seeing as how he was only bested by one shinobi and was equal with another. The blade had its counters, those with enough chakra could just overflow the jinjutsu. There were those like his friend Zabuza who could simply fight without needing to use his eyes, effectively rendering the Jinjutsu useless since he relied on sound. Finally there was Kisum's blade in which was Peace's ultimate enemy. Whenever the two fought, Peace's Jinjutsu would be absorbed by the shark's blade, granting him near limitless chakra during their battles. The thought caused him to momentarily scowl. However when in real combat, his blade coated in poison finished battles with one stroke that rarely ever missed. So as years went by and the mist slipped farther and farther into poverty. Peace's father had passed away, his mother still had never returned. A flicker of sadness came across his face at the thought of his mother, but the continuing of his story quickly masked it. It was beginning to become apparent that Peace was going to be the shinobi chosen to join the swordsman. However upon the return of a fling he had in the past came to him with his child. He didn't know what to do, the woman was a one-night stand. In the mist one night stands happened all the time, it was a way to keep your head out of the gutter for a half hour each night. He was stuck between pursuing his dream and manning up to take care of his newborn son. He chose the later after thinking about it long and hard. No matter how much he wanted to achieve his dream, he knew what it was like growing up with lousy parents. There was no need for him to bring that upon his own flesh and blood if he could prevent it. Zabuza went on to join the seven shinobi swordsmen. Peace went on to raise his child, with the support of the shinobi swordsman whose respect he had earned. His family had found peace in a village in civil war. It didn't last long, despite growing to love his wife, far more than he ever anticipated he would since she was a one-night stand. It didn't stop him from doing what he felt was right. That was why when a couple years later after he had stopped running for the seven shinobi swordsman's seat, that when a plot to take out the Sande Mizuka Gay came around, he was all for it. His unique blade had nearly brought the fall of their corrupted leader and his reign over the mist. However, in the last moments of battle, the Sande Mizuka Gay expressed exactly why he was the strongest shinobi in the mist. Three of the seven shinobi swordsmen, Raiga, Zabuza, and Kisum, then himself a swordsman in all but name, plunged their blades through the Mizuka Gay. The Mizuka Gay merely laughed. He casually walked through all five of them as if he wasn't solid, merely phasing through the swordsmen. He had strolled over to the window and turned to the four of them before speaking calmly, your lives are over gentlemen. I hope it was fun for you while it lasted. Enjoy life on the run, I will be seeing some of you soon. The Mizuka Gay had shot a look at Kissam when he said that, but then disappeared, the only thing left behind was a smoking pile of flesh near the window. It didn't look good with them standing by it, and the successor of the Sande Mizuka Gay, Yugura, the Jinchuriki of Sambi, came barging and ready to fight. So being tired from battle, they did the only reasonable thing left to do, they fled as far and as fast as they could. Zabuza was the first to break off from the group, stopping by to pick up his young female apprentice. Naruto got wide-eyed and looked over to Haku when that was said. Haku seemed to pale at the notion that Peace knew exactly who she was. The barmaid paused for a minute before asking a question. Wait a minute so you your? She pointed at Haku unable to find the right word she wanted to say. Haku nodded with her eyes closed, she had been having trouble staying in her seat listening to her former village's past. Add to the fact that she was directly in the story someone made her want to get up and go. The death of her former sensei still fresh in her mind, she wasn't having a good time sitting there. Peace noticed the distress on Haku's face. Despite himself wanting to finish the story, he decided to cut it short. I am afraid I have to leave. Naruto looked like someone had kicked his puppy, if he had one. What? 
No. We still didn't get to hear the rest of the story. What else happened to you? Naruto sounded almost like a kid being read a story before he got tucked into bed. Boring gave a weak smile, well for a long time people said Yugura, the Yande Mizuka gate caught up to peace and killed him. Others said they fought and peace survived. Although how he lived and where he traveled from that point is a story for another time. He finished the last part with a small smile. Naruto crossed his arms over his chest. That was frustrating. The story to him was really good, it was interesting hearing about the troubles of other countries. The man picked up his blade and straw hat and vanished in an instant. No shunshin or leaves floating around, just vanished. The only thing left of his presence was a small stack of money in front of the barmaid, with on the front, thank you for listening to my story, spread the word please. The money was at least enough to cover a few months pay, needless to say the barmaid was extremely giddy and would be willing to spread the word of his story to anyone that came in the pub willing to listen. Naruto stood up and stretched his arms, do you think we will ever see him again? Aku scowled at that thought, the man put her on edge. She didn't like being around him, but the cold hard truth about the situation was. Soon. The dinner table was much more packed than it had been the first night. Kakashi had made his way downstairs this time, and with the added Team 10, it almost felt like a large family gathering. Chaoji had been forced to refrain from eating too much and moving on to his personal snacks at the dinner table. Despite it being a mission, they were guests in a town that was in poverty. Naruto couldn't get the story Warren had told him in his head. He thought Kanoha was a rough life. The only way to survive out there seemed to be the most dangerous. He idly wondered if things had changed since his defection from the mist. It was also nice that he had gotten to meet the man. It gave him another view on missing Nin. He was taught during his ninja training that missing ninja were bad guys and that they were to be captured and brought back to their respective nations for rewards. However he had met missing ninja, and so far one of them raised a young woman that he quickly grew to be fond of. The most recent one he met after barely talking to him and just hearing his story. He couldn't help but respect and want to get to know the man more. Naruto sighed at the dinner table, he had too much on him mind and wasn't particularly hungry. He wasn't the only one who wasn't eating however, neither was Kakashi. However he suspected that was because he didn't want everyone to see his face. The dinner was ruined when Tsunami's son entered the room however. The boy came in and after a rather pathetic introduction the boy turned to Tsunami and bluntly said. Mom, they are going to die. Gatu will just kill them as he would anyone else. Pointing a finger at no one particular, just the group of ninja in general. Tsunami of course gasped when her son had said this, Inari. She shouted in surprise, she had assumed she had taught her son better. Naruto frowned at the situation, the old him would have burst out and had gotten angry. However he now, despite feeling a bit bad about his thought process, was trying to find the cruelest and harshest statement he could possibly say to the boy all that while staying relevant. Unfortunately he couldn't think of one, so he did the next best thing he could think of. You're a foolish little child Naruto began which caused everyone's head to turn to him. Several shut up Naruto. Looks were shot his way which he ignored. Inari had taken to glaring at Naruto at being called out, but Naruto pressed on, you shouldn't speak of things that don't concern you. We don't need the blatant negativity from you because honestly. It does nothing to further our cause and we brush it off our shoulder. Perhaps when you grow up you can actually give some decent input. However that time is not now. Inari grit his teeth and his hat cast a shadow over his eyes when he held his head down, like you would know anything about the people in Wave. What can you honestly suggest that we should do? Naruto stabbed his chopstick into the remainder of his food and stood up. Sakura who was sitting next to him was tugging rather hard on his arm, trying to get him to sit down and not start a commotion. She must have forgot that this was Naruto. Again, honestly. I think that the people of Wave should just band together and drive Gatu out, you all outnumber him 15 to 1 when it comes to forces. You could probably beat him with a village militia armed with sticks. However you, my advice for you is much more simple. He grit his teeth as he continued to try and think of the cruelest things that he knew would leave a lasting impression on the boy. I think you should run away and cry. Hell I don't care if you hate me, despise me, for all I care you can live your life in the most unsightly way possible. To me until you grow up and accept that you don't have to sit on your ass and try and talk big to the people that are being paid to pick up your trash, you will always be a foolish little child in my eyes. Naruto stood up and began walking away up the stairs. Inari gained a look of malice, something that shouldn't have even been able to be on the face of a child. What would you know? Hey. I'm talking to you. He shouted as he watched the retreating form of Naruto, real men don't run away. Naruto paused for a moment at the top of the stairs to mull over the statement before he continued walking to the end of the hall. Everyone was rather surprised they hadn't heard an outburr. You're right. I am just being the bigger man and walking away from a battle I have already won. No use kicking a dead horse. The sound of a sliding door slamming went throughout the house. 
Everyone had appeared to have lost their appetite. They were having a nice dinner until that had happened. Sakura was the first to stand up, I am going to go check on Naruto. She said quickly, moving to put her dishes away in the sink before rushing up the stairs. She quickly grabbed a small notepad on a desk at the end of the hall and wrote don't disturb. On the paper before rushing to Naruto's shared room with Sasuke. She slipped the paper on the door and made sure it would stay up with the sliding and calmly walked in. The table had cleared, everyone had moved to put their dishes away, except for Sasuke. He had taken to staring at his reflection in the soup on his plate. He was taking deep breaths as he thought over Naruto's speech slash outburst he had at the dinner table. Words kept flooding into his head as he continued analyzing it. Foolish little. Hate me. Despise me. Live in an unsightful way. Run. Many words continued to flood into his head until all he could see was the vision of the saddest moment in his life. Foolish little brother, if you want to kill me, despise me, hate me. Run, run. Cling to live and survive in an unsightly way. Then someday, when you have these same eyes, come to me. He slammed his hand on the table once the memory had finished, thoroughly scaring the people in the nearby vicinity who had been caught unaware. He felt particularly bad when Tsunami had dropped a dish on the floor, shattering it into several pieces. Sasuke pursed his lips and walked outside to the dock. He needed time to think. Naruto? Sakura asked slowly as she walked into the room. Naruto had a pillow over his face and quickly said in annoyance, if you are here to ask me about Inari get out. Sakura frowned, no Naruto that isn't it I came here to talk to you. Naruto once again mumbled through the pillow, if you aren't here to give me a strip tease get out. That earned him a punch in the leg by Sakura, which quickly caused him to sit up with a hiss, hey that kinda hurt. He said quickly rubbing his leg. Sakura sighed as she looked Naruto over as he laid in bed, he seemed unfazed by what he had said to Inari, but that wasn't why she was here. What was it you wanted to talk to me about Sakura? He questioned as he looked her in the face in that dark room. He doubted that she could even see his eyes in this light. There was a long drawn out pause on her part. She seemed to fiddle with her hands and feet almost like she was a nervous wreck. She quickly sat next to Naruto and turned her back to him to avoid him being able to see her eyes, this was embarrassing enough as it was. Do you think I'm ugly? She quickly asked, it nearly came out in a slur. Naruto paused and raised an eyebrow, you're joking right? That is what you wanted to ask me? Sakura's shoulders sank and she looked down at her feet. Naruto groaned and sat up, of course you're not ugly, why would you think that? He asked with a frown on his face. The Sakura he knew was always confident ever since she became friends with Ino when they were kids. Sakura muttered something intangible which caused Naruto to reply intelligently, huh? Sakura took a deep breath as she felt Naruto wrap an arm around her shoulder, you did Naruto. She frowned once she said that and avoided his gaze. Naruto tilted his head, what the hell did I do? Sakura didn't even have to look at him to pick up the unspoken question. It's just that you no longer ask me out, you don't pay much attention to me anymore, hell you saw me half naked yesterday, and you didn't blush or anything. So be honest Naruto, am I ugly? Naruto closed his eyes and swung his legs off the side of the bed and sat next to Sakura in the dark, I can't believe we are seriously talking about this Sakura. You're not ugly, I just got tired of chasing after you, and you would always hit me. Sakura visibly flinched at that, Naruto felt the shake on his arm. It didn't have to do anything about your look Sakura. It had everything to do with how you treated me. No offense but you were cute but always were a total bitch to me. I'm not the type of person that would just go for people at face value. That and I slept with Ino. He thought quietly to himself while keeping a small smile on his face. Sakura pursed her lips as Naruto continued, as for you being naked Sakura, yes you look good, but right then wasn't the time to be staring at your boobs. We are a team Sakura, it was even said in class that the team you grow up on will likely be the closest people to you that you will ever have in life. I can't be thinking about you like that when all of our lives could have been in danger. Sakura held her head down and sighed, you're right. Naruto cut in trying to lighten the mood, Sakura don't worry alright. You are still very pretty, even if you tend to fall on the ugly side a bit. He finished with his tongue sticking out trying to lighten the mood. Sakura went to hit him, but thought over the past five minutes they had been talking. She turned her first to an open palm and gently pushed Naruto off the bed with a small smile on her face. Naruto stretched his arms, you're not ugly Sakura, I likely would still be going after you if you didn't treat me the way you usually do. Maybe sometime down the road things will change, but for now I like that we are actually friends for once. Sakura grinned, oh who said we were friends. It was her turn to tease and she took full advantage of it. Naruto pulled her off his bed quickly and laid down with a laugh, alright well, if that is the thing you wanted to ask me, I gave you my answer so go away. He tossed a pillow at her and could only grin when it hit her directly in the face. 
Sakura rolled her eyes at Naruto's random moments where he will act like a kid, despite how serious he had been over the past few days. Actually, there is one more thing. She waited until she knew he had his attention before saying, when were you going to tell me you were sleeping with Ino? She accused, pointing a finger for dramatic effect. Naruto gave the comical look that was a rather good impersonation of a fish. It took him a couple moments, but he quickly said quietly, I felt that it should be a personal matter between the two of us. Sakura's eyes promptly widened, wait what? You did sleep with Ino. She practically yelled the last part, at which Naruto threw the remaining pillow at her, this time she caught it. Naruto glared at her for tricking him, and that she was being loud. Tone yourself the fuck down. The only thing left for me to throw at you is a clock and a lamp. He whispered harshly. Why the hell are you so interested anyways? Sakura rolled her eyes, she felt it was obvious, Ino is my best friend. Of course I'm interested. Not to mention how she pretends to chase Sasuke kun Doesn't that hurt you when she does that? Naruto scowled at the last comment, Sakura drop it. He told her in an icy tone. What? No, come on Naruto tell me about it. She continued to pester him about it until he snapped and quietly said. Sakura, as your current commanding officer, shut up and don't talk to me about this today, actually better yet ask Ino why she was even talking to you about this. Naruto covered his face with his hands in frustration. The entire situation made him seem desperate, a guy going for a girl who was publicly going for a different guy. Naruto Ino didn't saw, she was promptly cut off by Naruto in a commanding voice saying. That was an order Sakura, go find Ino and talk to her about it. Sakura was about to promptly comply, Kakashi had notified everyone of Naruto's current position for the remainder of the mission. There were some footsteps coming into the dark room, talk to me about what? The moonlight dimly showed Ino's figure, who was followed by Haku. Neither looked like they were that happy being in either's presence. Good. Naruto closed his eyes in annoyance, Ino, Sakura, get out. Ino's eyes widened when she heard Naruto say that the moment she walked in. What why? She nearly yelled, this was supposed to be the first time she was going to talk to Naruto privately since they had been here. Aku brushed past Ino with a small smirk in the dark and whispered quickly and icily in her ear, because he wants to be alone with me. Ino grit her teeth and moved her foot outward, which Haku would have stumbled over if Naruto hadn't walked over and balanced her. I just don't want to talk to either of you two right now alright. Why don't you both go find Sasuke or something? Naruto finished with a frown before rather roughly ushering them out of the room before sliding the door closed and hooking a little locking latch on it down. Haku could see perfectly in this darkness, one of the reasons she held back a giggle when Naruto promptly bumped into a small desk at the end of the bed. He walked over and crashed down on his bed face first, what do you want Haku? He finished with a sigh. She unlike Sakura didn't bother to ask, so what compelled you to sleep with the Yamanaka? She stated bluntly. Naruto rolled his eyes, he just kicked two of the girls out of the room because he didn't want to talk about this. Why are you of all people interested in this Haku? He said giving a long breath out. He was hoping just to relax. That was of course until he felt a weight suddenly appear right next to him because I gave myself to you Naruto-sama. She leaned down and whispered in his ear, you can ask for anything from me. Naruto shivered when he heard that. What did you do Sakura? Why did I have to get kicked out of the room? Ino continued to rant, pacing back and forth of the dock. Well when did you plan to tell me? Sakura asked crossing her arms over her chest glaring at her best friend. Tell you what Sakura? Ino said rolling her eyes, here she was again cast off at the side, well that skank of a shinobi was doing god knows what to Naruto. Hell she said she was experienced well, how do you get experienced at something like that? She clenched her first at the thought and fumbled with the tie holding he hair and a ponytail. She continued to repeatedly put it up and put it down, claiming it was messed up. That you were fucking Naruto. What the hell do you think I was asking you about? Sakura nearly yelled it, it was a miracle that the house hadn't heard it. Ino looked like a deer caught in the way of a stray kunai. W what? Sakura what are you talking about? I didn't sleep with Naruto. Ino said trying to brush it off with a laugh. That isn't what he said. He actually got rather mad about it, especially when I asked him how it felt when you go for Sasuke ride in front of him. That is why we are out here talking and not inside talking with them. Sakura ran a hand through her hair. She was annoyed her friend kept this from her, then practically lied straight to her face. Then she continued to pursue Sasuke like nothing was wrong with that. Be no grimaced if if they're talking. She thought sourly to herself. How could you be doing that to all people Naruto? Sakura questioned her. Ino pleaded the fifth. Sighing in frustration at her friend, you know what? I don't know who you are going after, but she thought back to what Naruto said earlier. It didn't have to do anything about your look Sakura. It had everything to do with how you treated me. No offense but you were cute but always were a total bitch to me. I'm not the type of person that would just go for people at face value. 
Go after Sasuke if you want to, I'm not going to go after him anymore. You can have him. Sakura then quickly walked inside, not giving Ino time to think up a response. Ino went over to the edge of the dock and for the first time in a long time, cried. She never felt the need to cry before. She was always the most popular girl, always had a bunch of friends. Everyone liked her, and if they didn't they at least knew of her. Confident she could get any boy to like her was the main reason she pursued Sasuke all this time. She had never lost anything over it except her friendship with Sakura. However now, she felt like she lost something more important than that. Naruto. The ironic thing about the situation she felt was, she didn't want to stop pursuing Sasuke the other day, because it was the basis of her and her best friend's friendship. So she didn't and another girl was able to move in on Naruto. Now here she is, her friend telling her she was going to stop pursuing Sasuke. Maybe if she stopped pursuing Sasuke when they were practicing tree climbing, it would be her in the room with Naruto instead of Haku. The next morning Naruto woke to the sight of a half-naked Haku putting on clothes right next to his bedside. You know that we are supposed to cuddle for about an hour and possibly do it again later right? Haku gave a small smile and leaned over kissing Naruto on lips quickly, I have to go get something, I will be back around noon alright Naruto-kun. Naruto looked over to the clock by the bedside reading 10.30. That's fine he said slowly in between a yawn. Haku grabbed her hunter nin mask and said, I'll be back before you know it. She made the seal to Shunshin out of the house before Naruto held up a hand, wait. Haku paused and looked at him as he continued, where did Sasuke sleep? Haku smiled lightly, okay nothing serious. He shared a room with Sakura and Ino last night, since it is the only guest room with three twin beds. Naruto nodded with a sigh, alright hurry back. Haku put on her mask, which made her appearance far more intimidating, why of course Naruto-sama. Once she vanished the voice in his head called out to him, I like her more than the blonde one, she even knew what she was doing Naruto-kun. Naruto scowled, the fox was the last person he wanted to talk to about his sexual activities, jealous. He asked her in a low tone. Not in the least, I could have my time with you whenever I wanted. So why haven't you? Simple Naruto-kun, you haven't earned it yet. Naruto grit his teeth at that thought. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you all are enjoyed this video. If you do please leave a like share and subscribe also don't forget to support author of this fanfic. So let's end this video here. Until then see you in next video.